This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Okay, well, first step. Buy all the kerosene and matches in the city so she can't buy them. Ten minutes to go. It's a boiling summer day and I'm standing out in the sun, staring down at my watch as I wait for a visitor. To carry out my plan, I'm going to need the cooperation from a number of concerned parties. But even among them, it's safe to say that the person I'm about to meet is the single most crucial piece of the puzzle. Well, judging by the epic music, it's gonna be JB. Five minutes. Three minutes. Exactly 180 seconds before the arranged time, I hear a high-pitched engine approaching. Only moments later, a certain flashy sports car draws to a halt outside the gate. No less an eyesore than the first time I saw it. Precisely on time, huh? Just what you'd expect from a German. It's Jan! JB steps out of her car, carelessly brushing up a loose lock of that shaggy blonde hair that she's so proud of. She's got good hair. Sorry for dragging you all the way out here. Actually, it's the opposite. Yeah, I want to stay at the school. Keep up the whole normal student thing. And to make that possible, there's something I absolutely have to do. <laughs> She's like, um, I hate to tell you this, bro, but we're taking you out of there. We want you back full time. Well, you're in luck, because there's a month's supply of Dairy Queen in it for you if you help me out. That's JB for you. Can't count how many times that sharp nose for trouble has saved my ass. And I do value my donkeys. I was hoping you might ask. I've actually got a favor to ask of you. So that's the shape of it. Pretty simple, right? You're going to burn down the school? <laughs> Sorry. Too simple, huh? Must have been a bit of a letdown. <laughs> we are so burning down the school, and she's like, I'm calling the police. Wait, we are the police. <laughs> After carefully considering all of the relevant factors, I concluded that this would be the single most effective approach. No, it's almost certainly not, but for the sake of drama and intrigue, we are going for it. Depends on her. But in all probability, yes. I don't think anything less is going to get it done. <laughs> Otherwise, I think Sachi would have found the answer to my problem by now. And if I'm going to make this happen, I need your help, Julia. <laughs> now go for the month's supply of Dairy Queen. Probably not. You've never been the sort to put aside the big picture for a smaller objective. <laughs> Please listen to me. Julia. I've had enough regrets for one lifetime. I'm sick and tired of being a powerless bystander. I'm not, it's not like I want to go around rescuing random people like this, uh, some sort of superhero. <sighs> but when there's someone suffering in front of me, and when that someone is a person I care about, I want to do everything I can to help them. That's right. What I learned about her identity and her burden, I wanted to help her. That feeling was absolutely real. And it's only gotten stronger over time. And if I turn a blind eye to her problem now, I don't think it's ever going I'm ever going to understand the meaning of the words Asako left me. Hmm? You sure about that? Asako sounds like an interesting person. Sorry, I appreciate it. <laughs> Can't you just make everyone pretend that the fire never happened? I'm aware, yes. Don't worry, I'm not planning to give Ichigaya any headaches. As long as you can get me the East Beach Express information and the soup, 
I'll figure out the rest of my own. <laughs> Do I want to know? <laughs> There's a local Thai restaurant that makes the best soup you've ever had, but it's always sold out. <laughs> you haven't forgotten what sort of person my master was, have you? Asako trusted you more than anyone else, you know. And the same goes for me now. In fact, you're the only person in the world I'd call family. What I'm trying to say is... I really am grateful, JB. <sighs> My sincere apologies. Sure. Out of filial piety, I guess I'll refrain from pointing out the contrast between the cynical words and the visible wetness in the corner of her eyes. Ah, one last thing. I want you to get me four tickets for a helicopter ride. What?! <laughs> Mater really wants to ride four times. That part's a secret. What is going on in that mind of his? Yeah, go ahead and draw the funds you're going to need out of my account. That's right. I am. No, but that negotiation is next on my to-do list. Guess I'll have to show you that that isn't the only thing I picked up from my master. As a bright-eyed, idealistic educator, I'm sure she's here at this hour. Oh, we're going to... Are we going to be... Hey, Principal, we want to burn down your school. Please say yes. <laughs> After seeing off JB, I arrive at Principal's office in front of my... In search of my second most essential accomplice. Pardon me, coming in. As usual, I barge in without knocking. I catch a brief glimpse of Chizuru making a face in a small mirror before she jumps up out of her seat with a girlish little shriek. You'd think I'd walked in on some innocent maiden changing clothes. <laughs> I just wanted to ask Principal, uh, do you, does the school have fire insurance? Uh, no, we don't. I would buy some. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know if we have that in the budget. No, 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 I would buy some. <laughs> Get out the highest possible <laughs> payoff. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Chizuru. I'm sorry about that. Mm. Apparently, I seem to have picked a somewhat awkward moment to visit. Yeah, I thought I'd take you out on a date today, Chizuru. Get your get your fiends. <laughs> I don't hear her saying no, though. Also, the fact that we are... Apparently, the most unbelievable thing about this whole story is the fact that, that Yuji is only supposed to be, like, 17 years old. Or maybe 18. Like, that that is the most single most unbelievable part of the entire story. <laughs> and she's apparently... Older than she looks, so this is this might be a little icky. The hell are you getting all flustered about? It's a joke, obviously. <laughs> Easy, buddy. You gotta play your cards right if you want Principal to get fire insurance. Yeah, <laughs> she's not happy with us. I wonder why. <laughs> Judging from the look in her eyes and the tone of her voice, it's probably best to stop screwing around now. All right, I'll explain in detail. But basically, I want your cooperation with a, a little plan of mine. <laughs> oh, if grit, I got a little job for you. That's right. 
So, as I'm sure you can imagine, I really could use her help as a standing member of the board of directors. And as the prefectural governor's daughter. Wait, she's the, she's the governor's daughter? What's the matter? That time of the month really sneaks up on you, doesn't it? Wow! People mention that time of the month a lot in this story, and it's always in a very rude and condescending way. Principal, you didn't skip buying fire insurance during the Game of Life, did you? Oh, I was being perfectly serious, though. He'd joke about going on a date with you, but not joke about burning the school down. Her heart's been frozen solid for a very long time now. Falling it out is going to require some serious kinetic energy. Right. It was a complete coincidence that Michiru asked Sachi to get rid of the test, but... Ultimately, we have a chance to settle things in one shot thanks to your timely assistance. Yes, I know. If we do carry out Michiru's request, you're probably going to be the one inconvenienced most severely. So, if you refuse to cooperate, Chizuru, I have no choice but to scrap this plan. You absolutely can refuse us burning down the school! How about this? I'll make you a promise in exchange. Sachi's going to be herself again. I'm going to make that happen. Yeah. What? How is he cut? What? Okay, no, this is the most unbelievable part of the story. How are we? How are we convincing like the government, the police, the secret service agents, and the principal of the school that it's going to be okay for us to burn the school down for the greater good of a girl's personality? Like what? Thanks, and sorry to drag you into this. That's true. Hey, Yumiko, we gotta, we got I gotta meet with Yumiko's father and see if we can burn down his school. <laughs> we could ask to make copies of the school and just burn them outside. Boom. <laughs> just burn the inside of the school. That's possible. Even so, I know you'll find a way to do what needs to be done. Oh? How'd you know I brought JB in already? She would be harder to convince than Prince of Pal. I see. Persuasive reasoning. <laughs> Yuji's not burning down the school to save the world. He's burning down the school to change a girl's personality, even when there I'm sure there are a lot of other ways we could do it with less arson. <laughs> not to worry. It's not like you had much to lose in the first place. What with that baby face of yours? Wow! Could you s could you not be incredibly rude for five minutes? <laughs> Don't get all huffy. There are plenty of ladies out there who'd kill to be mocked for their youthful appearance. Interesting question. Guess that'd have to be my master. How do you know? Right. Kusakabe Asako, the woman I called master. She adopted me, a child breathing, but in no other sense living then patiently raised me into someone capable of working for Ichigaya. You could say I'm only standing here today thanks to her. That debt's something I won't ever be able to forget, even if I was inclined to try. That's a pretty decent summary. Even after all this time, with everything she taught me in a hell of a lot of independent study, I'm still ten times, ten sizes too small to fill her shoes. 
Kusakabe Asako was without a doubt the most extraordinary person I've ever known. But ironically enough, she was also the woman who helped me find something like normality. Yes, we need to read manga together. It's very, very, very true. Get Natsuki too. Kind of surprised you knew a slain term like that. What? Am I the friend you have in software development? I see. Anyway, yeah. Once I have those, I'll get to work constructing a more specific plan. Right. Also, I need a relatively sizable room without too much clutter. Oh, trust me, it's about to be filled with one giant tool. And his name is Yuji. <laughs> Appreciate it. Sorry about all this. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Sachi, it's just the laundry. It's not that stressful. Or is she drawing the plans, detailed plans on exactly how to set fire to the school? When I arrive at the third floor of the dorm in search of Sachi, I find her crouched over a sizable pile of books, flipping pages with an expression of intense focus. Seems she's using the spare minutes waiting for the laundry to review a stack of reference materials. Not entirely out of character, to be sure. But this is a dramatic change from the dreary thoughtfulness that followed our return from the beach. Instead of losing herself in distracted reveries, she's immersed in practical research. And just as I'd expected, the composure has already vanished from her face. Proof that she's realized her previous method won't work for this request. The circumstances are very different. One of the most fundamental, or on the most fundamental level, the school buildings in question differ radically in scale and construction. Even after a cursory comparison of those differences, it's simple enough to realize that the same trick is unlikely to work again. We'll need more kerosene. No, kerosene won't cut it. Alright, we're gonna need some napalm then. At this point, it comes down to whether or not she can find an entirely different approach, but... Right now, Sachi can't even sense my presence at her side. The law she's imposed on herself, her absolute need to be a good girl, has forced her into a state of such obsessive concentration that nothing else even registers. Of course, I expected something of the sort, but it's the first time I've seen Sachi this intently serious. Her self-assured air of easy confidence has vanished without a trace. The request she's currently grappling with presents an exceptionally thorny problem, after all. On some level, Sachi seems to realize that she's fast approaching a moment of truth. In that case, the best thing I can do for the girl right now is allow her to simmer in her own desperation. Um, sure. Morning, Sunshine. Yeah. Even as she broods over getting rid of the test, Sachi's consistently maintaining her routine of cleaning my room and doing my laundry. I guess I should be happy as a boyfriend that she places such a high priority on taking care of me. But no matter how used to how used she is to these sorts of chores, it's obvious that keeping up the daily grind is going to be hard on her given the circumstances. And I can't allow myself to step in right to help right now. It's a mixed feeling. Hmm? As I'm mowing things over, my cell phone bleats shrilly in my pocket. No need to bother looking at the screen, I know who this calls from. That you, JB? Seems she hasn't figured out it's an effective plan yet. Currently absorbed in brainstorming. So? What can I do you for? Uh-oh. She's about to find out that we stole the shark floaty. Uh, think we can use it? Good to hear. Roger. Oh, we're gonna recreate the Thai soup. Excellent. I was planning to take care of that myself, you know. I didn't want to push everything off on you. Oh, 
All right, whatever you say. Thanks. Right. And within an hour of that phone call, a truck bearing JB's gift makes its way through the school gates. That's fine. Just unload everything here and I'll take care of the rest. Thanks, bro! Shut <laughs> up! He actually said bro! <laughs> when all the goods are finally out of the truck, his, the delivery man leaves uh, with a cheerful frat boy style farewell. He drove into the sandlot? Guess I'd better get these inside before the others notice. Yuji, why do you have 50 cases of kerosene and a box of matches? Oh, uh, nothing important! <laughs> Makina, did you know that there's a frozen yogurt truck on the opposite end of the campus right now? Mitru, did you also know that there's a frozen yogurt truck on the opposite end of campus right now? <laughs> bah, too late. Well, might have been inevitable given how rare it is to see a vehicle of any kind actually inside our campus. But it's not like I've got anything I can't let them see, so I guess it shouldn't really be a problem. <sighs> Yes, I bought uh, some kerosene, but I'm just going to use it as paint varnish. Also, I got uh, the jumbo Costco-sized pack of Scooby-Doo fruit snacks. Want a pack? They're pretty good. Of course, I of course I'll share the Scooby-Doo fruit snacks with you, Makina. Oh, Yumiko. Oh, no wonder they didn't turn around. Yumiko's the only one who wouldn't be fooled by the frozen yogurt truck. Word of advice, Sakaki. Pinching your nose disdainfully while you speak isn't exactly going to help you win friends and influence people. <laughs> well, that'd be the paint varnish. Of course it is. That's sort of how this stuff is. Oh yeah, I'm also uh, starting a garden. I'm growing some carrots. I'm growing some cucumbers. We can make some salad. It'll be nice. Really, Makina? No. No, I am not. <laughs> Our thoughtful principal noticed that Sachi's been looking busy lately. Decided to compensate by roping me into a temporary position as a volunteer gardener. Figured I'd start off with the fundamentals and enrich the soil a bit. First part of the job is laying down some flower beds along the whole outer periphery of the athletic grounds. Somewhere down the line, I'm looking to spread the flower-filled ex uh, exercise concept throughout Mishima Cape as a whole. Playing with dirt's good stuff, you know? Gardening's a pretty solid workout, and it's got a well-documented relaxing effect as well. Amine's not entirely buying this, is she? Sharp girl. Amine, did you know that there's a frozen yogurt truck on the opposite end of campus right now? What? Not really, but motorcycles, trucks, and now tractors? Is there anything you can't drive? Oh my gosh, I just now realized. Amine is like Gina from Crazy Taxi. She dresses provocatively and dr drives crazy. <laughs> I see. Aww. I'm with Makina on that one, too. Honestly, though, I would totally try gardening. My family used to have a garden. <laughs> oh, Amine is not even fooled by the frozen yogurt. She's got ice cream, which is just better. <laughs> Green tea flavor? I mean, if you like that. These are not flavors I like. 
Deftly wrapping up the conversation, the big sister of the group coaxes the two troubled children back into the dorm. Amine might not have bought my story, but I think she's got the general idea that I'm taking action for Sachi's sake. This is probably her way of being considerate. Oh, hey, Yumiko. Uh, yeah, I do. What's up? Don't you want to get some of that ice cream? <laughs> Alright. What do you want to know? Ah. I know how much you people love sticking your nose into others' business. I was more or less expecting something of the sort. I wouldn't have gone out of my way to reopen old wounds if I had thought otherwise. Regular meetings? I guess this pretty secrecy, this petty secrecy, is her way of getting payback for the other day. Enjoy the ice cream. Hmm. In any case, it's nice that they're being relatively cooperative. Later that night. In the pitch black hallway, the only sound is the echoing of my own footsteps. After waiting until my classmates were soundly asleep, I slipped out of my way, my way out of the dorm to infiltrate the abandoned school building. With a recent construction like this, it's definitely going to take some time to get things ready. To be honest, without Chizuru's cooperation, I doubt I could have gotten anywhere. And even now, it won't be easy. That said, failure simply is not an option. After pushing Sachi that hard, I damn well better give my part everything I've got. I ordered a chainsaw online. Nobody asked any questions. Getting close to four in the morning. Another hour and we're getting dangerously close to Sachi or Amine waking up. Wow! Twitch use... Twitch Automod is the absolute worst. Like, last last stream I did, they thought the word butt was so bad that it, they had to like manually hold it and I had to physically approve it, but they did not automatically hold the word pissed. Like, really, Twitch? For real? <laughs> Oh, well. Yes, poop is an acceptable word to use in Twitch chat. <laughs> Alright. Just to be on the safe side, I guess I'll call it a night. Hmm? That room. <laughs> Sachi, why are you up this late? From the school hallway, I noticed a single light still on in the dormitory. And when I quietly look inside a few minutes later, I find Sachi crouched intently over her desk. She must have been up all night working. Her, normal, her normally neat desk is cluttered with books, magazines, paper, everything from documents concerning modern architectural techniques to yellowed old newspaper clippings. Probably because she confidently declared I should leave everything to her, Sachi's consciously trying not to show any signs of struggling. But in reality, she's practically at her wit's end. Precisely because of her own thoroughness and intelligence, the faults in every new plan must present themselves with frustrating speed. There are just no easy answers to this challenge. With a silent shout of encouragement, I ease the door shut and quietly leave Sachi's room behind. <laughs> 